In this episode, Jeb tries to be an engineer, Colonel Valley tries to be an airline pilot, and the Kerpalo 4 once again tries to get to Minmus, but this time with a new launch profile. All of this and more is coming up right now. Okay, so this is starting to make some sense for me. So like, yeah, let's, let's pick something I've done like, okay, material study, here we go. So you can see here on my material study I've done, this is starting to make, I think now that I'm here, so these aren't clickable, but it tells you in research and development I now have, and it's 100% completed, all the material studies around Kerbin, all the material studies around the moon, and for Minmus, I've got just some that are in flight, not completed yet, not back in. So this is, okay, yeah, now this is me. I was trying to click on these things before, but they're not uh, clickable things. And if I do something like, let's see, what else we got? Like a, like a temperature scan. A lot of temperature scans to get around the moon on the surface. Oh, these are 10.8 each. They're not insignificant either. Okay. More reasons to go there. Same for the is it, This is this is awesome. All right, all right, all right. How are things going here? Getting close to the end of the Kerpalo Four. Unfortunately, we do not have an engineer to go aboard until Madby's ready. <laughs> Madby again in five days. At least now <laughs> I have pretty soon. I think it's Kerberi who's my engineer. Uh, we'll have two of them on the surface and two scientists too. So that is. Kerpalo 4 completed and you can see right now by the way I have three bays going I'm going to stop continually pushing things into the bays because what I want to do is start to get into the expedition Eve half of this series <laughs> the first half of this series was all about getting ready to go to Eve now it's going to be the actual doing of it and now that the tracking station is on its way being upgraded uh, how far does it have to go 10 more days probably won't happen this episode but because the money's already been invested in that upgrade there's no reason for me to keep worrying about contracts and collecting funds i'm going to start time warping through this kind of stuff more quickly we're going to see some bigger time jumps so as these vessels get finished off we're not going to be pumping other vessels and picking up other missions to replace them so that we can time warp ahead to our EVE missions. Got plans for three different vessels on their way to EVE, one of which is being built right now, the Carriner 1. And I also have something on its way to Duna. And we're going to put our energy towards that. So less stuff on Kerbin, more stuff in interplanetary space in future episodes. And I am hope that's going to be a good thing for everybody. But right now, well, I do have this supply barge coming up here. And we are off on a very familiar looking booster with uh, five of these uh, Thumper SRBs and then a torch engine up here in the middle. Though there are some changes and there's changes to the launch script and changes to my ascent profile. And I'm going to talk about actually right now and this is all precipitated, mostly precipitated by changes in Kerbalism. So number one is right here I have a smart part. I haven't used a lot of smart parts, but what this smart part is looking for is for the fuel in this tank to be empty, and as soon as it's empty, it stages. Okay, so that's the smart part doing it. It's no longer my script doing it. And the reason for that is, is because with my updated Kerbalism, Kerbalism now deals with engine failures uh, at any time, but in particular they seem to be happening during launch. And I got into train playing around with my launch script and uh, I was doing quite a lot of testing and I think three times I got engine failures during launches and what ended up happening is the staging in the old launch script was handled by the script by recognizing, oh my gosh, we have a... I'm going to get another staging event. There we go. <laughs> we have a dramatic drop in thrust. We must have lost some engines, must have lost, run out of fuel. I'm going to stage. Well, <laughs> when I got an engine failure, it noticed the dramatic drop in thrust, and it went ahead and went and staged and got ahead and staged. And in fact, in one vessel, um, the staging didn't help the situation, and it actually staged right up the stack. <laughs> and it was like, oh, this isn't a very good way to handle all this. So now when it notices that there is an, a 
a sudden drop in thrust. It knows that's an engine failure and it's going to do the abort action group. And this is going to stage again. There we go. A lot of flame effects happening there. And now I'm getting into the other thing. So staging is handled by smart parts um, and the program's handling auto aborting, which I'm actually still playing with. Some of the aborts aren't the cleanest thing in the world, but it's, it, it's working on it. The other thing to notice here is that thrust has been dramatically reduced. And if we take a look here, it says limiting thrust to weight ratio to 0.9. Now it's locking to prograde. That's something else that is new. So I have some additional events that are happening, and this got precipitated by, thanks to a comment that was in one of my tutorial videos, I started playing around with upper stage thrusts. I always used to keep the thr thrust up really high and just blast my way to my apoapsis is where I wanted it to be. And this person suggested, well, why not try smaller engines? Well, this is the engine that it's always been, but I'm limiting the thrust. And I'm finding, oh, that's it, handling the staging event. I did that at 50 kilometers. Again, that was the script doing that, not me. Um, and it's sort of, it all depends on how you design the booster. Some boosters get a spectacular, uh, not a spectacular, but a good, an extra few hundred meters per second of additional uh, fuel that's left over by the time you get yourself into low carbon orbit, uh, simply by reducing the thrust. And especially if you replace this with a, mu with a much lighter engine. Now that the thrust is so low, I don't need as heavy an engine as this. And, um... Some boosters, not so much, which was really, I found, kind of interesting. And all, So I'm going to get into probably redesigning all of my boosters and uh, trying to do... But the end result of all of this is actually these things take longer to get to orbit with this. But I'm finding I'm getting a little bit of an increase to a very large amount of increase in the efficiencies of the insertions. Something I'm going to continue to play with, probably result in also... Uh, redesigning a lot of this but you can see like we're still going we're, we're at s almost at 65 kilometers this is still going apoapsis is getting close to 80 kilometers um, and then it's going to do the same thing there we go we just got 80 kilometers in the apoapsis but um, but the the happy end of all of that was that look at my periapsis it's only at negative 48 kilometers so it's almost out of the surface of Kerbin so it's not going to take much of a burn at uh, Apoapsis to finish off the circularization of all of this. So, fun time. But anyway, this is a supply barge. I actually did have a contract set aside for this to resupply Kerbin Station, but that contract was uh, stolen <laughs> by the Palm 1 last episode when it just took a couple of tourists up there and the Palm 1 has food aboard and the uh, contract thought, oh, thanks for the supplies and it satisfied the contract. This has a ton more supplies. There's some extra stuff in here, some extra of these containers you can, Kerbals can carry around. I also have supplies in, in, oh, I can't, these guys can only be accessed by Kerbals from the X outside, so I'll have to get, uh, maybe I shouldn't let Bill do all the work. We'll get Jeb out to go hauling some of these aboard. There's also a lot of food, a lot of water, and other goodies as well coming aboard. Uh, these are pressurized tanks full of oxygen, so we can top up the oxygen. I think there's nitrogen in here too. Are they all oxygen? I don't know. We'll see what we got when we get up there. This is, uh, these are storage containers from Universal Storage 2. These are, like, it just... Oh, I can't even... Oh, wait, I can do that. I can do this, though. There we go. Look, look. Oh, isn't that, isn't that wonderful? And the lights come on inside. Uh, I, I, I think that's just great. Like, And there's such subtle detail in the animation. Like, if we retract them, look at the locks. Can you see the, see the little lock? I'll do it one more time. But there's little locks here that unlock. I, I, oh, that's, that's beautiful. Anyway, close that. Are we close? No, we're still quite a ways away. Let's do some time warping. <laughs> that burn is now complete. Oh, we can un we can uh, get rid of this uh, booster style. You know what? Why don't I take it with me? I'll take it with me. What the heck? Now, one thing is I was talking about engine failure. So if you take here, can I see the stats here? Yes. So the stats are right here under reliability with each of these engines. So this engine 
has three minutes and 20 seconds left of remaining burn time in it and up to nine uh, ignitions. And it breaks down after that. Now I'm just noticing for the first time, I believe this is total burn time, which means I might need to jump back to uh, <laughs> some of my previous rockets and see if I can upgrade these a little bit. You can adjust this in the VAB for a little bit for some extra money and a little bit more mass. You can up the reliability of these engines so you get more remaining burn time and more ignitions. These also are an average. Um, you it maybe it'll last longer than that and very possibly it might be shorter than that i don't know quite the spread in the data the standard deviation if you will so i don't know how much shorter this could go um it could be scary but i'm just looking at yeah i gotta take a look at my my sh ship that it's on its way that's being built right now that's supposed to be going to eve i might want to take a look at its engine make sure that um I give them enough burn time that they can do what it is they need to do. For this though, it's not going to be a problem. You know, these uh, limited ignitions, I got four ignitions left on this, this engine here, really does make me think a little differently when I come out. I'm so used to going in here doing little puffs with the engines, and of course each one of those little puffs with the engine is four more uh, another ignition that's going to disappear, so now I'm probably better off just coming in and you know, trying to do this without, with just one slow burn as opposed to one big burn. These guys don't have limited, no they don't, <laughs> I was about to say. And then switch to RCS, that would be really cruel if all of a sudden they're like, uh, you got limited blasts with your RCS, but that is not the case, okay. We'll get ourselves, we're about 40 seconds away from closest approach. I'm going to try and do this with as minimal amount of ignitions as I can. We'll see. Okay, let's start just really short. Oh, this isn't going to take too long. Okay, that's already that. Okay, we're done with that engine. Um, we're going to do the rest of this with RCS. Okay, the RCS is unbalanced, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, this is not... Okay, um... The RCS is unbalanced, of course, because I have this big weight on the bottom here. Alright, I'll have to rethink my whole docking procedure, I think. Maybe bringing this along wasn't such a good idea. It's not like I'm keeping it anyway. Yeah, this is going to make docking really awkward. So I'm going to hit this. Let's jettison this. We are not hitting the station, so this will just go... There we go. And we'll just come in like this. That's much better. Now I got now I got my vectors here well lined up. We're coming right in. Coming in still pretty hot. Slow down. Thank goodness I got rid of that stage. Well. Oh, I know why that's so the forward is so strong because when I go on the forward one I'm firing these guys at the back which are really there for propulsion that's okay we're there we're there it's all good it's all good okay so what we need to do oh my goodness come on there we are is start unloading some of these containers so this I think I can do these containers internally. Oh, except that container is completely full. Okie dokie, how are these containers doing? Not except, okay, jab, jab, jab. Oh wait, we can act, at least do like oxygen and stuff. Why don't we start with that? By the way, Jeb and Bill are still up here for a contract. Where is that? I do have a contract here. Urban station they still have tw almost 27 days <laughs> left this time is actually right I, I used to think that maybe there was oh I'm done this one let's um, but I ended up doing some pilot rotations a number of episodes ago and that kept resetting the clock to the beginning of the 60-day period that this contract is for so that's that's my bad that's my silliness so sorry fella I don't know I I don't even want to think about how long 
Bill has been in space for. It's been for a ridiculous quantity of time. But a little bit longer, Bill. So once we have all these resources transferred, Bill has worked way too hard of late, so we're going to put Jeb out here. Now, unfortunately, what Jeb can't do is do constructions in space, but he certainly can. Um... He certainly can haul supplies, so let's see. Hopefully, I didn't give so many supplies. Okay, that's empty. Oh, I put on these gorgeous containers and left them empty. <laughs> what about over this way? Is there room? I know this end one is pretty full. Are these external containers... Are they full? No, lots of room in there. How about this one? Lots of room in there. Okay, we, we got this. All right, Jeb. Bill, you can relax. Jeb's got this. Oh, what's in here? Are these cont I guess I figured they had enough junk up here. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that a uh, little bit of a some kind of funky physics happening there. Okay, Jeb, a bit of a kick in the back. Let's try this again. Inventory. Um, Jeb can also, I'm pretty sure, put stuff into here. All right, I, it wouldn't make sense if he could put a crate inside a crate, would it? No, that would make no sense. That would be some Doctor Who space management going on there. I did, by the way, Jeb should have reflections going on his helmet here. Yeah, it looks nice. You see the reflections there? That's coming from the texture replacer. I used to have that turned off. Um, but then I upgraded my processor and figured it could handle it, and it certainly is handling it. My old processor certainly wouldn't be able to handle that. Oh, I just realized something. We got a bit of an issue. Um, because I'm sure Jeb can't put a container inside a container. Again, that really wouldn't make sense, would it? No. Alright, uh, what? Okay. So, what we're going to need to do, we do need Bill. We need an engineer. This is why you keep your engineers around. Come on, let go. Alright, there we go. Put on Bill's lights here. Alright, uh, you are going the wrong way, Bill. So, first, Bill needs his wrench. Because Jebediah doesn't know how such things actually work. Uh, let's see, do we have a wrench in here? Inventory. Yeah, a wrench. Oh, Bill. And while we have that, let's actually grab a little handhold. That will help us out. And then we will equip said... Oh, we got two of them here. Split. Let's put one of the wrenches back. Okay, we don't need two wrenches. Bill is going to show... Be like, there he is. And he's got his wrench in his hand. All right, let's go find Jeb. We need to get those mounting brackets. Oh! Oh, okay. I think Bill needs to take Jeb's load off his hand. Uh, can I open up Jeb's inventory? Yeah. Can I take this from you? Okay. Yeah. So far, so good. Okay. And now we don't need... Do I have it? Oh my gosh. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we don't need Jeb's inventory, Bill, and then we need this, and he's also got to, well, let's do one thing at a time, one thing at a time, so let's get, we'll, we'll mount the other two of these external containers, uh, kind of equidistant from these ones, so we'll see if we'll put a, I need to rotate the camera a bit, yeah. What if I put this handhold right on where that flag is? I think so. Okay, so we'll grab this. There, uh, H is attach. And click. There we go. Alright, and now Bill should be able to grab that. Ah, there. 
And then that makes the rest of this all much, much easier. Okay. Uh, so, we need one of these mounting brackets. Oh, Bill can't carry so much stuff. Can I just do it from here, maybe? Maybe I can. Go to, yeah, 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 you can. Okay, so there, and H, and attach. And we got another mounting bracket down here. Attach. Excellent. And we can now put our container. Boom! Bill, you are the boss. All right, uh, let's. Bill's going to let go. He's going to grab his little handhold. Bill's job is done. He has done what an engineer is needed to require to do. Jebediah can now get that last container and he can mount that now himself. He doesn't need Bill for this part because this is a no tools required job. Just grab this, drop it into here, mount. Nicely done, Jeb. Uh, yep, get out of that little funky spot there. And we just got to get Jeb back inside. Okay, that's it. No more. These guys are excited. They needed something to do. <laughs> got them outside. Got them to stretch their legs. Well done, gentlemen. But I think that's going to be it. I think we can now deorbit our little supply tug. Alright, station has been resupplied. This is now deorbiting. Easy peasy. Flight 120, I forgot about you. What else? Space plane hangar. I'm building a seaplane again for some strange reason. I don't know why. So let's get the Flight 120 happening. <laughs> so this is Flight 120. Oh, what do we got here? KSC, ATC, Kesk. Let's get rid of the joke. <laughs> you are cleared to the desert airfield departure on runway 09. We only have one runway. <laughs> Heading 262, squawk 02, do whatever. Okay, go away. Yeah, air traffic control. I didn't know we had air traffic control. There we go. So this is Flight 120. It is a passenger jet. There is a... So I got... who's Colonel Valley is aboard. And... Here, can I expand this a little bit? I don't think that's it. Oh, we can keep going! That's as much as we got. And we got a whole stack of... Looks like identical tourists. <laughs> that are all wanting to go to the desert airfield in our brand new little mini airliner um yeah these, these are contracts that actually have been available for a long long time but you needed to build something that you can hold five kerbals in and finally finally i can build something or six kerbals with the pilot and finally look at that it has crew cabins so no more of these like using those command seats or anything like that, which I think were always a little bit glitchy. Anyway, we are going to the desert airfield. That's it. We got to go to desert airfield. We got to land and we got to come back. And we are off. And it's not a bad flyer. It's, you can see obviously there is a ton of weight at the back. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I find these kind of large at the back. I'm not too happy. I tried it with just like three Junos, um, but it was a little underpowered with just that, so it, I guess it works. New cockpit, too. You know, you get that inline cockpit like right with the very first node, but this has only been unlocked relatively recently, so I think it looks pretty good. There's actually a whole collection of these kind of airline contracts with the airliners just getting bigger and bigger as you move along. So that's, that's kind of cool. That's something to look forward to. You know, looking at it right now, I think these wings are a little small. If I were to build this thing again, I think I'd make them bigger. That's a tendency. I have to keep the angle of attack pretty high. But it, it, a little, I think a little bit, even looks a little small, I think the wings. A little bit bigger wings, I think, would have been, would have been a good thing. Oh, I can open up the map. <gasps> Look at that beautiful map. My beautiful bio map. Oh, it's marking anomaly mandalis for me too. A question mark there. Nice. I'm a little worried about fuel. But we'll see. I think I'm gonna 
reduce throttle just a bit. Just to try and conserve fuel a little bit. Oh, I'm seeing the waypoint now. We'll get a good uh so that's the desert airfield. I think this is this must be the pyramids. So we're gonna get a nice view of the pyramids anyway. So ladies, if you look to your right, you will see the rare Kerbin Pyramids left behind by an unknown civilization. The mysteries of the pyramids have yet to be solved. Oh, there you are. Should ensure we get over these mountains. And I am going to be very tight for fuel on the way back. I thought I gave myself enough, but... This is going to be very sketchy. Didn't help that I came down low too early. Should have stayed up at my cruising altitude. Alright, the desert airfield is in sight. I have absolutely no idea which way around the runway is though. Oh, whoa, whoa, desert airfield ATC, Keska 1, New Yabe. We have you on approach. You are cleared to land on the desert airfield. Winds 110 at 10 to 15. Sure they are. I don't believe you. Oh, this plane. I should have spent more time on it. It is a beastly thing. If I don't end up satisfying this mission, I will definitely make some improvements to this. Hopefully get it flying better. And more fuel would be good. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch your say. Yeah, 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 yeah. What the hell? Come on. Back this way. Using speed. Let that speed drop. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like the way this is going at all here. Get that. Oh, okay. We're gonna run out of runway. We're gonna run out of runway. We're dropping. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, let's just brake very lightly. Okay, we're, we're, we're here. We're here. We're here. I'm count. Oh, 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 stop, stop. Now, we're supposed to, okay, we've landed. Wait for exchange of passengers, which, so oh, yeah, there's a timer going down. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. And then we got to wait for our clearance. So 20 seconds. Fifteen. You know, are these people going to switch up? Zero. Nope. Exchange of passengers, but they're all the same. Okay, and we got a request clearance. Yada yada. You are cleared to the Space Center Airport via Kerman departure flight plan. Depart the desert airfield heading 082 squawk 0118. But of course, there's still the question of fuel, and I quickly realized that no matter how much I nurse this thing, we're not making it home. <laughs> just, there's just no way. Well, hopefully this won't count as a fail. Instead, I'll get a redo at it, but I think what I should be doing really is just getting this over with and ditching in the water. I am not going to fulfill this contract. We'll have to redesign this plane and try this again if it lets me. We'll see what happens. Mayday, mayday. <laughs> we are going to be in need of a rescue. Whoa! A little drop, but nothing broke, nothing blew up. We're down. Okay, what's going to happen to the contract when I recover this? I still have that contract I think I do so I'll try this again but we'll definitely need to do a redesign of flight 120
Now, I should have realized, actually, this thing wasn't going to make it. I mean, it's Delta V, 22,600. I should have been paying more attention. Like, like, I do a basis of comparison. The Weasley M1, which you've seen a lot of, there it is there, 40,000 meters per second for its Delta V. And this, I know, is capable of getting, for instance, to the poles and then come back, which means it can fly halfway around the planet. I should do something in that range. I think the... Desert airfield was further away than I really anticipated it was going to be. So we'll bring this back, and the name of the game is going to be more fuel, bigger wings, and maybe this time let's spend a little bit of time practicing it, <laughs> make sure it's a decent way. Well, you know, I think part of the issue that I have when it comes to my flying skills is I just don't give myself enough as much time with planes as I do with rockets and a lot of that just has to do with what I enjoy it also has to do with the fact that I just I, I play career mode almost all the time I almost always play with Kerbal construction time so what that means is that practicing with new planes means spending simulation money um, to be honest it's not really a lot of money now that I'm looking at it I'm wondering if in the new version they've nerfed this a little bit but um, I just would rather be doing other things is really what it comes down to. But this guy seems pretty serviceable. A lot more fuel aboard, so should be able to do that flight. And frankly, and you can see as well, I've improved the oops, the uh, lifting surfaces. So a lot more wing area on this thing now. So it should... I have this. That's on that. Okay. Um, it should be a better flyer. Let's see if I can bring this down in for landing. I also have the landing gear here now further out. Now that these engines are mounted on the wings rather than on the sides of the fuselage, which I think will really... It helps with stability when you're on the runway for sure. Alright, Verbery. Let's see if we can put this down without embarrassing ourselves too much. I think we're coming in pretty quick. Oh, we got to need more altitude too. Woo! <laughs> Alright, let's see. Get her down. Definitely not too quick now. Oh, wow, it's not a bad... And now it's dropping down. Oh, no, that was... It glides well. Brakes on. Look at that. Beautiful. Alright, I think I got something that's going to work for me. But we still have more to go over in this episode. Coming up next, we have Verbery with two tourists in the Palm One, and her job is to bring them over the Great Desert. This is actually a duplicate of a contract that you saw a few episodes ago, so I'm not going to spend much time with it at all, other than to mention that the next time you see the Palm One, it'll probably look quite a bit different. First thing I did actually is get rid of these stupid deployable solar panels that were on it that had a tendency to break when I staged the fairing and were completely unnecessary, so I just replaced them with some static Oxstat solar panels. But the other thing that I did is redesign this lifter. You see, this lifter really didn't see any kind of performance increase with my new launch script, so I thought I'd best redesign it, get rid of this thing, See if I can build something that is lighter, more efficient, and still can be able to lift this vehicle into orbit. And I did do that, and I pushed it into the building queue, and you will be seeing it in a future episode whenever it comes around to doing a crew rotation so we can get poor build <laughs> to the surface. The next thing I want to show you is just the insertion of GOI-3. As the name implies, this is the third of the GOI series. You've already seen the other two, so this got inserted around Minmus. No big deal. Everything actually went fine. I know it's much more enjoyable to watch me screw up, so who wants to see me doing things right? So let's move on to, well, something with a history of screw-ups. And we're off with the launch the seemingly Jinx Skrupalo series, this one being Skrupalo 4. Um, not one of my previous Skrupalos have actually completely fulfilled their missions. 
and only one of them actually even got to the location that it was supposed to get to. So Apollo 1 was a moon landing mission. Um, I honestly can't remember what went wrong with it. I'll have to get back and take a look at that. For Apollo 2, I know, ran into a nitrogen issue and couldn't do an additional EVA to deploy some necessary equipment. However, it did get to the surface of the moon in return, so I mean, that part was okay. For Apollo 3, uh, well, I simply did forgot to upgrade the and increase the amount of snacks and oxygen and the like that the Kerbals required in order to go to Minmus instead of going to the moon and had to do an abort and come straight on back. And this is now Apollo 4, and if we take a look, darn well better. Uh, they have 29 days of food. How come they only have one day of oxygen? No, I'm serious. How is that possible? There's something wacky going on there. I'll have to check on that. Oh, the monoprop fuel cell's on. Is that what's going on? Okay, we have just nerfed our engines down there so if this can settle itself down there is a monoprop fuel cell tucked in here somewhere it just seems to love to turn itself on I'm gonna have a fun time finding it though aren't I it's tucked in here yes found it stopped 31 days of oxygen. Hoorah. All right. Actually, that reminds me of what happened to Carpolo 1. Carpolo 1 had exactly that problem. The fuel cell had turned itself on. It had used up all its oxygen. I didn't notice. And I had to abort the mission. In all cases, Kerbals did get back safely. So, I mean, I, I suppose I can call that a success. But I'm glad I checked that time. How does that keep turning itself back on? I don't know. I check in the VAB, make sure, and whatever. It's off now. Lots of oxygen, lots of water. Good stuff. <laughs> and with that resolved, I'd like to welcome aboard our newest patrons, Martin Ellis and Stephen Lore. Thanks, gentlemen, for your support, and welcome aboard. And just a reminder to everybody else, if you're thinking about supporting this channel, well, one thing you can do is hit that subscribe button if you already haven't done so. Drop a like and drop a comment. But if you'd like to provide some extra support, whatever you feel like, don't forget I do have a Patreon page and members of the Patreon page do receive rewards, including things like getting these videos early and ad-free, as well as access to craft and KOS files. And actually, while we're talking about our Patreon team, let's talk about the team that we have aboard this rocket. Well, first off here, we have our pilot, Colonel Lagford Kerman. We have Mad B. Kerman, who has been on every single one of these Kripalo missions. Maybe that's not a good thing. <laughs> I'm worried she might be my jinx. And we got Orlin along for the ride as well. You know, even though they take longer, I'm really starting to like these insertions with this lower thrust in the upper part of the atmosphere. It just seems to be a lot more like a real rocket. Oh my gosh, look at that. This is, I think, where this efficiency, look at that periapsis, 36 kilometers on the periapsis, so it's going to take the teeniest, tiniest of burns. Of course, that burn is now six minutes away. Once we get into space, we should be getting our lights on, too. You know, I'm starting to wonder... It'd be a fun thing to try and do with the script too, though, more challenging than what I have here right now. I'm starting to wonder if the best thing is not to let that apoapsis get so far ahead. And just keep burning, just keeping that apoapsis just ahead until you finally have your orbit. Okay, there are our lights. And also it set up this massive 41 meter per second circularization burn. I find my script sometimes has issues with these really, really short burns with powerful engines on the back. We'll see how it goes.
Well, again, I mean, it's not like I got a massive amount of Delta V here at the end, so I'm not really sure I did myself favors with that. I think what I need to do is start getting in the habit of making these engines smaller for these upper stages. Actually, no, this was a whole asparagus thing. This, these engines have been on the whole time. How are they doing? We have only one minute of burn time left. <laughs> This is how I get myself into trouble. It's a good thing this insertion burn is so short. But I'm starting to think this is another booster that's due for a redesign. I think this big, these asparagus stage monsters where engines are burning all the time is not the way to go with this. I think more like small, light, upper stage, vacuum efficient engine is the thing to do. Yeah, and it's also doing something interesting. It's I'm used to getting up to my apoapsis with the apoapsis being close to where the ascending node is, and you can see that's kind of messing up the inclination part of the burn. Okay, how did it do here? Not great. Let's let's burn it a little bit more. Yeah, work in progress is script. Okay, I don't know. It's it's good enough. Not as good as it normally would be, and also really didn't saved myself a lot of delta v so i'm not quite sure i don't know whatever let's stage lagerfort is a level 0 pilot this is his first time in orbit Going all the way and gonna land on Min Miss, so this is a pretty big thing for him. Alright. Um, I'm just gonna go to this other stage here. I'm gonna get rid of it right now while I'm thinking about it. So let's spin you around. And then we'll get ourselves. I just don't want it hanging around. I'm not too concerned about recovery cost on this. Oh, we have an engine failure. <laughs> well, it's a good time for that to happen. You know, Kerbals can fix these if they're yellow like this. But whatever. Whoa, 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 that was a bad idea. Oh! That was a really bad idea. I kind of pushed it. Now all the engines have failed. <laughs> Oh, it's going to deorbit, so we're okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, redesigning boosters would be a good idea. Okay, let's get back to these guys. They're up here safely. We're still good. <laughs> Always an adventure. All right, Min Miss Ho. Oh, and it's a pretty sunrise that we're flying right into. This is going to be a three minute burn to set these folks on a course to Minmus. And of course, it's going to be several days for them to get out there. So we'll most certainly be checking on them again and seeing if the three, this particular combination of three Kerbals, can break the Kerpalo Jinx. But this largely clears out a lot of the service bays that were going on in the VAB. The next thing coming up is the Cariner which is that interplanetary mission to fly by EVE and go to MOHO. I do have two other missions that I'm planning for EVE as well as my mission that is on its way to Duna. And after this, that is going to be the focus of these remaining episodes. We're going to start jumping forward much more in time. We'll still do some things here and there in and around Kerbin and its couple of moons but the theme in the future is going to be interplanetary. But of course, that's all for future episodes. And in the meantime, I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you then. I want to look for the hatch. That's what I'm looking for. That is what we call a miss. <laughs>